Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to give you guys some tips on um, this whole idea of linear perspective. Now, uh, there are many tutorials I see that teaches how to draw something in linear perspective, but I figured I would try to give you guys a um, an introduction, if you will, to linear perspective. Before I start doing tutorials on drawing a house in 2.1 point and 3 point perspective, I would give you a basic introduction to what this whole linear perspective thing is all about. And then, you know, from there, you can expand on that or build on that whenever you're doing um, linear perspective drawings. Now, linear perspective pretty much is a system by which artists uh, create the illusion of three-dimensional space on a flat two-dimensional surface. Um, but the, the key thing that I want you guys to know is that linear perspective, most, you know, just like in other tutorials where I, you know, I share with you that I believe drawing is creating the illusion of reality and it's based on simplifying things we see, linear perspective is no exception. Linear perspective is actually based on this one important premise. And it's that things appear larger the closer to us they are and smaller the further away from us they they are or they they tend to be right so as something moves away from us you'll notice that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it vanishes from our view and by extension when things get small as they move away from us whether it's you know a person anything they eventually get to the point where a point where they vanish and that point is called the vanishing point okay it's it's pretty simple um, it's just the point at which things vanish from our view if you look down the street you see cars driving um, eventually it gets to the point where it just becomes a dot and you can't see it anymore same thing with with just about anything all right things tend to vanish from our view the further away from us they get so this is the fundamental premise things get smaller the far away they get from us now by extension not only do things get smaller the parts of things also get smaller as it moves away from us meaning say for example we have a uh, this is a wall right now you we are looking at this wall right now you know like this so both sides seem to be equal distance away from where we are so meaning this height and this height we know you know they are the same however if we are looking at this from one end what will happen is it will taper away from us like this so one end will seem closer the one that's closer to us will seem larger than the one that's further away even though in reality we know they're the same okay but when things are seen from a position where one end is closer than the other it will appear to get smaller as it goes away from us and this is referred to as seeing it in perspective so you see things in perspective when there's a distortion in the thing that we're looking at so it appears to be um, diminishing in size as it moves away from us and likewise just like with this what will happen is this will eventually get if say for example this wall was infinitely long it will eventually keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where it will also vanish from our view to the vanishing point all right so this is also referred to as a vanishing point when things get so small they vanish from our view however the wall may not be this long it may just be like this but even if it is just this short right just like this nonetheless the lines will still appear to get smaller as it you know even if they don't meet they may not meet because it may not be long enough to see the lines actually meet but you will notice that the lines will start converging meaning so there, there, there are two deductions to make from this right one is uh, well one refers to parallel lines and we're gonna get back to this in a minute but another key thing to notice is that Say, for example, this, let's take this wall example again. And, and, and as I said, refer to nature whenever you're trying to understand these concepts because nature is the ultimate teacher of art, okay? Because we're ultimately trying to recreate what we see in, in nature and we build on it or aestheticize it or add our personal thing to it, but nature is the ultimate source. So, for example, you'll notice that things eventually get smaller the further and further away they get from us, right? People, a wall, whatever, right? So, in the same sense, this point at which things disappear the vanishing point you'll notice that the vanishing point will always be in line with 
your eye level. So in other words, if you're standing up and you're looking at this, this wall, right? Um, you'll notice that the wall, if, if for example, you're looking at um, any object, say you're looking at something, this is, this is your eye level, okay? And your eye level pretty much means the level or the height of your eyes above the ground. That's your eye level, right? This is the ground, that's your eye level. And you'll notice that when you look at things, they will tend to vanish to the point that's found on the horizon or your eye level. So in other words, your eye level coincides with the, with the horizon of the Earth. See? All right? So you'll notice that when you look at streets, they will tend to vanish on that your eye level, whether you're above or below. So no, that means, let's say we have this little tunnel shape here. And this is very important. You have this tunnel shape. And it's really long like that. All right? Let's look at this. this. This is not being seen in perspective. You're seeing in perspective when one end appears to, it appears to diminish in size. Okay, that's when things are seen in perspective. This is just being seen pretty level right now. You're seeing it in straight on view, right? If you're standing over it, what, will, what you'll notice is that your eye level is above it. So that means it will taper upwards towards your eye level. And it will, the point at which it vanishes from our view will be on your eye level. Right? So, and if, likewise, if you're under it, that means your eye level is below it, and you'll notice that it will taper downwards. And if you're standing pretty level to it, you'll notice that it will taper like that towards your eye level or your vanishing point. So, in other words, and it's just, you see how this is how art connects with perception, meaning every person's reality is centered around that person and that's what perception is all about we all see the world in unique ways and we see things in unique ways so when you're on the beach if you're on the beach and you're just relaxing like that your eye level is going to be pretty low so when you see things they're going to be vanishing from your view going down to your eye level like that so you'll, you'll see things as if it's they're huge and they're tapering downwards to your eye level right and if you're standing above something then it tapers up okay now that's pretty important now <clears throat> that's one thing the eye level and the vanishing point thing now let's get to the other one the other uh, thing that we'll notice is parallel lines appear to converge towards a vanishing point when seen in perspective so in other words parallel lines by definition never meet but in reality they appear to meet when they're seen in perspective so the, the lines of the railroad track will appear to actually meet even though we know these lines never meet in actuality but they appear to when seen in perspective okay now <clears throat> the implication of that is that let's look at um, space by you know in terms of planes so let's look at a one plane or just like a square right a square has two two pairs of parallel lines right so what this implies or let's just say this is a rectangle right what this implies this concept applies here is that parallel lines will appear to meet when seen in perspective even though we know they don't so what this means is if we see this rectangle in uh, this rectangle in, in perspective it will appear to converge based on where we're seeing it from so in other words let's say I write the word noon on this right when seen in perspective, this can appear a variety of ways. For example, if this is A, B, C, D, right? This can appear in this way. See, it appears to get smaller. And if we see it um, from the other side, we can see it from the other side as well, and it looks more like that. Same thing. We can also see it where it looks like this because that's also another pair of parallel lines. See? It looks like that. And also, we can see it from the other way, from top to bottom as well, because those are also parallel lines. So parallel lines are pretty useful because they enable us to um, recreate the illusion of depth. See, so therefore we can use them as guidelines. Okay, now, <clears throat> now let's take this a little bit further. So now we know that parallel, just like things appear to get smaller as they, um, further away they go from us, 
um, when they're seen in perspective. Same thing with parallel lines, because a part of something also appear to be smaller. So the wall actually looks so small up here compared to here, even though we know in actuality it's really just running like that. Okay? Now, let's think about space. If you remember anything when you did math, um, there are three planes of space. That's why we say 3D space. 3D means there are three dimensions, right? Length, width, and depth. Or, in terms of axes, we have X, Y, and Z, right? So, in terms of length, width, and depth, the best shape or form that helps us to see the three planes of space or three dimensions of space is a block, like that. Now, with well, a block, it's perfect for studying space and applying in linear perspective because, or creating the illusion of space because this helps us to see the illusion of space a lot more effectively than, for example, a sphere does. See, with this, you're not really seeing much. Where do you, where's the side from the front? Where's the top from the, You can't see that. But with a, a block, you can easily see the sides from the front, the top from the bottom, and the other side, and from the back. You know, you can see the three um, dimensions pretty easily. So this is the length, this is the depth, and this is, this is the length, this is the width, and this is the depth. All right? You can see the, the three dimensions of space pretty easily. But also, a key thing that a cube or a block enables us to see is that we have the three dimensions of space. And with that, we have lines that define each one. See, we have basically three pairs of par three sets of parallel lines. See? This is where it's very important. We have three sets of parallel lines. So we have um, a set of lines that define... See, that's one dimension. So there are four lines that define that dimension, four pairs of lines. And there's another pair of lines, another set of lines. See, that define that dimension. And then there's another set of lines, parallel lines, that def define this dimension. See? So what happens is, let's remember up here, parallel lines, just like anything, appears to get smaller away from us. Um, same thing with parallel lines. Parallel lines appear to actually meet when seen in perspective. They they converge towards some vanishing point, which is on our eye level, or horizon line. And this is what creates the illusion of space. So see, this looks like you're actually seeing it in space. This looks like you're actually seeing it in space, because we're creating what we see in nature. This is what happens. In nature, when you look at things, they appear to get smaller the further away they get from us. So, in space, we know that there are three dimensions. And each of those dimensions have their own sets of parallel lines. See, the width lines, this is width, right? width, the length, or height, and depth. Those are the three sets of um, parallel lines that define the different dimensions, width, length, and depth. So this is the key thing. So this means when you actually have a, um, a cube or a block like this, you should be able to identify the three pairs of parallel lines, the three sets of parallel lines. In other words, the first set are these. See, that's one set of parallel lines. Okay? The next set are these. See, they're all parallel. And with, with a block, we can see three. The other one is hidden. In other words, it's actually, you know, there are four of them, meaning there's one back here that we're not seeing. See, if, the, if things were transparent, we'd be able to see all four, but we're seeing three. So right now, there's three sets of parallel lines for width, three sets of parallel lines for length, and three sets of parallel lines for depth. Hope you follow to that point. This is the key thing. So that means... The whole idea of one-point perspective, two-point perspective, or three-point perspective comes from this basic form, the cube or the block, which means 
we know there are three dimensions. That's why we say 3D, length, width, and depth. So how do we get one-point perspective, two-point perspective, three-point perspective? It means there are three sets of parallel lines. So in other words, there, is, there are three ways that this cube can actually diminish in size. See? So it can diminish in size in terms of width. It can diminish in size in terms of length. And it can diminish in size in terms, in terms of depth. So we can manipulate the, whatever sets of parallel lines we want. So let's, let's manipulate one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to, to get a better understanding of what is one-point perspective, two-point perspective, and so on. I'm going to first draw a cube here. Right? And remember with a cube, it's showing three dimensions, right? It's showing us the three dimensions of space, length, width, and depth, or X, Y, Z, however you want to look at it. But we're seeing the three dimensions of how we define three-dimensional space. So in other words, there are three sets of parallel lines. One, two, three. That's one set, right? Next set of parallel lines. One, two, three. See, these lines are all parallel. And then the other one is one, two, three. Okay? Now, this block is not being seen in perspective. Why? Because all three lines are parallel to each other. There are three sets. Three sets of parallel lines. Not three parallel lines, three sets. Here you're seeing the three basic Pair, um, sets of parallel lines. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we get one-point perspective, two-point perspective, three-point perspective, and so on. Okay? So in other words, one-point perspective means that we are going to make only one set of parallel lines converge. So that's what makes things appear to be in perspective when a pair of or sets of parallel lines are converging. And I'm going to show you um, I can make this appear to be in one point perspective by having any of these sets of parallel lines converge. And one point perspective means we're only diminishing one side or one set of parallel lines. That's what one, uh, one point perspective means. Of the three sets of parallel lines, we're only going to make one set converge. So in other words, you can make an object appear um, smaller in terms of its width is getting smaller, or its depth is getting smaller, or its length is getting smaller. Two-point perspective means you're using two sets of lines to converge. Three-point perspective means three, all three of the lines are converging. So you'll need three vanishing points, right? So let's do it one at a time and you'll see what I mean. So see, that's one point perspective. So pretty much what I did is I individually converged one of the three sets of parallel lines. See, this is one set, one set of parallel lines, two sets of parallel lines, three sets of parallel lines. And once only one is being, is being converged to a vanishing point, then we always have one point perspective. See that? Once you remember this basic shape, if you remember the cube, you will understand perspective because it is all based on the three dimensions of space, length, width, and depth. And there are only three dimensions to our space, to our sense of indefinition of space. Three planes, three dimensions, length, width, and depth, X, Y, and Z. And we can only distinguish or converge or manipulate either one of the two Two of the three, two of the three, or all three. And I'm just going to go on and do two and three, and you'll see how I'll manipulate the same thing.
all right and see that so basically this is how you know this is essentially the basics of linear perspective that once you understand that a cube has three dimensions it has three pairs of parallel lines this cube is not being seen in perspective or this block is not being seen in perspective because none of the par par the sets of parallel lines are converging here you can see one only one of the pairs are being manipulated or converging see of course they're going to go to a, a vanishing point and you're going to find that these two vanishing points will almost always be on our eye level see and that's you know we're, we're, when I start showing you how to draw buildings in perspective we'll get into stuff like that but for now I just want you to get this concept that's what we mean by one one point perspective so for this there's only one vanishing point because only one set of the parallel lines are converging same here same here and notice I put the arrows on the other one so you know that those lines repair that remain parallel with this one's see only one set of line one set of parallel lines remain you know parallel see here, one is being parallel, one is being parallel, but the other two are converging because they're not parallel anymore. And here, there are no parallel lines. All three sets of parallel lines are converging. And this is when we see something in three-point perspective. So in other words, the length is getting smaller, the depth is getting smaller, and the width is getting smaller as it moves away from us. All of it is being seen in, um, in perspective. The entire dimension, all three dimensions are being seen in perspective. Here only one dimension is being in perspective, seen in perspective, and you can choose which one you want. The depth can be seen in perspective, the length can be seen in perspective, or the width. You know, you just think of three dimensions, three sets of parallel lines, and that's the fundamental basis of linear perspective.